Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Wa sallam. أما بعد so the sheikh then said حفظ الله تعالى have mercy upon Salafiyah he said teach the newly practicing Muslims what will remain with them and what they can benefit from do not encourage them upon matters that will disappear with time Men will die, articles and statements come and go. However, Tawheed, Sunnah, Salat, Tahara, and the main rituals of the religion will remain with them until the certainty, meaning a death. So this is the priority for them if you truly understand. Then he says, have mercy upon Salafiyah. Do not corrupt it by the contagious disease of labeling and classifying people and competing with each other in that. The most severe disease I can see today is in two situations. Firstly, ignorance in differentiating between the various groups. As soon as a person opposes them with a statement or article they do not desire, they create a new group, pushing it down the throat of history. So this person can be forcefully ascribed to it. Unfortunately, this has now plagued Salafia itself, meaning that how many people have now made new names for groups based on individuals which perhaps an individual made a mistake or they just differed with it. And we'll understand. We can think of many examples but we'll refer to name calling here. We'll refrain from it as much as possible. He said in the past 20 years they have bought out for us Hadadiya, Maghrawiya, Ururiya, Ma'arabiya, Abadiya, Hajuriya, Falahiya, Madkhaliya. So this is, never. I don't have to say it, the Sheikh is saying. He's mentioning how many people label. For example, some people they name, when they Madkhaliya, they mean, they mean Sheikh Rabi'ah. They mean Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi. And they mean Sheikh Zayd al-Madkhali, those from their tribe. And when they say Hajuriya, they mean uh, Sheikh uh, Yahya al-Hajuri and his followers. Okay, uh, when they mean Abadiya, that means they're talking about Imam Abdul Masih al Abad, Wallah Musta'an, and amongst others. He said, "Until when, O worshippers of Allah?" He said, "Have mercy upon Salafia. <coughs> whoever errs, then say so and so erred, or so and so erred, and whoever is with him. But there is no need for this innovative classification of people, meaning making whole new categories of people." and new classifications. Then he mentions the second point that he sees as a very serious error that, uh, <clears throat> that is happening today. He said, classifying people based upon suspicion and doubt, as well as ignorance regarding what necessitates a person to be ascribed to a particular group. Not everybody who speaks with politics wears the iqal and cufflinks becomes an ikhwan. So that means everyone who dresses a certain way or everyone who does such and said that they're Akhwani, Akhwani Muslimi. This is the point, being careful about quickly labeling people. He said, not everybody who goes towards Zuhud and Dawa becomes a Tabliqi. Not everyone who makes takfir of the Tawagheet and the heretics becomes a Khadiji. And not everyone who praises a person of innovation due to his affair being hidden from him is ascribed to his his like they say and think. This is very important because some many many people they say you uh, <coughs> you praise uh, Tahir for example Tahir uh, and uh, Tahir Wyatt and so that means you're with him. You know that means you follow every issue, every mistake, everything. You are with him. You're in agreement with him. Or how many people? have sent me messages about 
Muhammad Munir, because I did a video praising him, saying what I know of him. How many people, oh, you don't know his condition in our city. Uh, he said this, do you agree with him in this? Do you fit? That is not absolute for anyone. I have so many ulama that I take from that I don't agree. Even some of them who I hold respectful, and I'll buy their books and listen to some of their lectures, but I don't agree with many issues that they have differed with some of the other ulama. I don't agree with them. And I don't agree not based on desires, hopefully based on knowledge, because I research to the extent of my ability to look into those issues. So I agree with them based on knowledge, not based on ta'asab, not based on Sheikh Abdul Masin said, Sheikh so and so said, that's it, in Tahina, that. But based on knowledge and, and to be, having the ability to look into the Messiah and the issues. The point being, a habitifillah, <coughs> is that even if you praise someone, that doesn't mean you absolutely take everything from them. And if they are, uh, because maybe perhaps the affair is hidden from you, or what is being said about them is not true, or what is being said about them uh, is, in fact, the one who's criticizing them is the one who erred, not them. Whatever the case may be, there's many different scenarios. But the, the point is, the person who is cautious and being quick to label, they're in a much better position than the one who feels compelled to always label, to always classify, to always take someone off the sunnah. Who do you think has a better station with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to these fairs? Who's safer in their religion? The one who's quick with their tongue and has to always repent and say, oh, I made a mistake about so-and-so, I made takfir of so-and-so, I made tibdi of so-and-so, but I take it back now. Or the one who was cautious in his tongue in the first place and didn't have to take back anything because they weren't quick to speak about so-and-so. Maybe they advised the person or they researched deeper into the matter. And this is the point, this is the kind of tarbiyah we want to give to our, our shabab. <clears throat> then the sheikh says, have mercy upon Salafiyyah. You should know what nece necessitates criticism and dispraise. And when a person is ascribed to a particular group, which the scholars have all agreed, uh, agreed on its misguidance in exit from the sunnah, and know when a person is not ascribed to such a group, do not oppress people. So be careful and cautious of labeling people. The Sheikh then said, yes, have mercy upon Salafiya. You should know the virtue of the scholars even if they slip up and make mistakes. Leave the criticism of the scholars to the scholars and do not open the door to ignorant ones. Do not accustom them to daring to speak against scholars. By Allah, they will not show mercy to you and to the other scholars if you end up opposing them. And this has already occurred to the extent that some of these savage rabies dared to speak against Sheikh bin Baz, bin Uthaymeen, al-Albani, al-Madkhali, and others than them, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Say to the ignorant person, be silent. From the goodness of a person's Islam is to leave off what does not concern him. And that comes from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu And then he says, say to the ignorant person, be silent because the person you are speaking about is a scholar. We ask Allah to forgive him, but he is better than you. He teaches goodness to the people. Many people have benefited from him. <clears throat> so very important, the to Allah, to be, to restrain oneself. To be cautious. Then the Sheikh said, Say to the ignorant person, be silent. Begin with yourself. Remove ignorance from yourself. Take from where the scholars have taken from. You should learn a lesson from how scholars fell into errors and mistakes. If this is the case with them, then what do you think will happen to the people of ignorance and those who are misguided? Discipline them. Encourage them to love people, to show mercy to creation, and to be focused on the guidance of people. So this is the kind of tarbiyah that we want to institute because this is the asal of Salafiya. This is what those great Imams, if you want to know what Imam bin Baz, Al-Abani, al uh, Imam Muqbil, and <coughs> Imam bin Uthaymeen, and other than them, the kind of tarbiyah that they give was not rushing and quick to, to label people and put people into groups and classify them, but rather they were quick to rectify and speak about Ahl Bid'ah and put Ahl Bid'ah in their place, but they rectified. They brought communities together. They rectified situations when there was fitna. They kept the fitna from even happening because the people feared them because of their known wara and their known shaja and bravery and their known 
uh, love of the Sunnah and staunchness of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi Wasallam.